Welcome traders to another Tickmill Earnings Report Preview with me, Patrick Mummerly. Before we jump into today's report, it's important as always that we adhere to the risk disclaimer. The material provided is for information purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. The views, information and opinions expressed by me in this recording are solely mine and they're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So let's jump into today's report. Today we're looking at Palantir. Uh, we're looking for their release to be before the uh, New York Open today. Uh, earnings per share of 0.04 cents on revenue of 443.38 million. I would say there is a whisper number in the market that the earnings per share could come in a little higher at uh, 0.05 cents. Palantir is guiding for 30% long-term annual top-line growth out to 2025, but it doesn't provide full year dollar revenue guidance. It does, however, submit quarterly revenue and margin guidance. For the first quarter of 2022, Palantir has guided for that 443 million figure in revenues on an adjusted operating margin of 23%. With the momentum in the commercial business strengthening towards the end of last year, I think Palantir will be able to beat its own guidance and report uh, maybe slightly higher revenues, and then that will bump up the earnings per share, as mentioned but with respect to the whisper number on the street. More important than revenue projections is free cash flow. Uh, fiscal year 2021 truly was a game changer for Palantir because it moved from uh, free cash flow margins of circa 25% um, in fiscal year 2020 to 28% FC F margins within the span of just 12 months. What this means is that Palantir is now uh, free cash flow positive and new customers that are onboarded to Palantir's software platforms are starting to make positive free cash flow contributions. Due to Palantir's strengthening customer acquisition capabilities, I think Palantir uh, could report around at least uh, 110, 115 million in free cash flow uh, throughout the first quarter of 2022, which it calculates to a 25% uh, free cash flow uh, margin based off the first quarter of 2022 revenues. Shares of Palantir went through a significant revaluation obviously last year, in large part because investors are less optimistic about post-pandemic revenue prospect growth for the company. Uh, based off expected revenues of 2.60 billion into fiscal year 2023, Palantir's shares are valued at a price to earnings ratio of about 9.3. So let's look at the uh, statistical trading patterns of Palantir around their earnings release. Shares have moved higher in the immediate aftermath of earnings, three out of six previous reports. On average, the stock moved down 1.4% the first day of trading after the company reported earnings. Based on the previous six earnings releases, Palantir is more likely to trade lower one day after earnings, on average losing 3.7%. On average, the stock has moved higher one week after earnings by 1.5%. In terms of what the options market is pricing, options traders are pricing a 17.1% move on earnings. Stock has actually averaged an 11.2% move in recent quarters. So from a flow and sentiment perspective, uh, Friday, May 6, there was some notable buying 7,400 contracts of the $11 call expiring June 17th this year. Options order flow in general has been bearish. Investor sentiment going into the earnings release has 56% expecting an earnings beat. The company's uh, guidance for revenue of approximately 443 million. Consensus estimates are for earnings to decline year over year by 0.0%, with revenue increasing 29.93%. Short interest has decreased by 3.2% since the company's last earnings release, while the stock has actually drifted lower 23.5% from its open uh, following its previous earnings release and it now trades 49.6 percent below its 200-day moving average let's take a look at the charts here and see if we can identify any trading opportunities in palantir so from a technical perspective on the daily chart here i'm tracking a five wave sequence we have a five equals one downside objective now coming in at eight dollars 89 and that represents the low, or that would represent a marginal new low for the stock since it's uh, since it opened in uh, in 
at the October of 2020. But that would complete the five wave sequence and we can note here some decent momentum divergence developing. So I personally would like to see an undershoot of the, of the lows there and then a reversal develop and certainly start to think about being long on bullish reversal patterns from the 880 area looking for a move back through the high volume node at 1051 and then ultimately looking for a break of this descending trend line resistance coming in at 1084 and then you remember there's that call buyer there looking for upside extension so if we can get through this trend line resistance then i look for a move up into uh, $13.95 and then the wave four high there coming in at $14.86 so that's how i'm looking to play this stock uh, and we'll see if we get that pop lower on the earnings release and a reversal as always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.